If you have installed a hitch extension on your vehicle or are planning on installing one to accommodate a rear overhang like I have here on my truck camper and are wondering how will that additional length affect your tongue weight, then this video is for you. First, I will explain the mechanics of how tongue weight is transferred to both the front and rear axles. Next, I will present a real-world example using my own truck and trailer. Finally, I will weigh the combined setup with and without a hitch extension at my local Catskills. So starting with a picture of my whole setup using a 28 inch hitch extension. So first I simplify this by drawing an outline. And next, I'm going to simplify this drawing a little bit further by converting my truck and trailer and so on into just simple platforms, simulating the weight of everything with these simple little boxes, and then replacing the, the wheels, which are representing the axles, with just little triangle supports, just so that I have these points. To simplify further, I'll next just zoom into the, the truck and the camper, and then finally eliminate the tongue for the trailer. So now I just have a very simple drawing where the left side is representing the front axle, and the right side is representing the rear axle. A little rectangle in the center just representing the weight. And then of course you can see the the hitch extension and the ball mount with the ball, just to kind of give a sense for what the distances are. Next, I'll represent what the force down on the front and rear axles are with some arrows. And just for simplicity and for purpose of illustration, I'll make those arrows represent the force and I'll make them the same. Now, if we apply tongue weight to the ball, as that weight gets applied and is increased, the weight on the rear axle will actually increase, or the force down. And at the same time, the force on the front axle will actually re reduce. So now, we need to work out what the proportions are between the tongue weight that's being applied to the ball and how it affects the additional weight on the rear axle and also how it lightens up the force on the front axle. First, I'll add some dimensions. The distance between the axles is just the wheelbase, which I'll represent as WB. I'll label the distance from the rear axle to the ball as TL for tongue length, which includes the hitch extension, HE, and the length of the ball mount, BM. The reduction of the force on the front axle with relation to the tongue weight is just like that of a teeter-totter with the pivot at the rear axle, which is actually just a simple class one lever. Here's the equation. Solving for F, we see that the reduction in force on the front axle is proportional to the tongue length. Conversely, the increase of the force on the rear axle with respect to the tongue weight is defined as a class two lever. The pivot in this case is at the front axle. The tongue weight applied at the ball is transferred to the rear axle at an increased amount based on these proportions. Solving for R, we see that R is greater than the tongue weight and increases as the tongue length increases. Next, I'll work out a couple examples with and without a hitch extension. I have a 2014 Ram 3500 crew cab dually pickup. Ram provides a document called the Ram Bodybuilder's Guide which includes this drawing. I'll provide a link in the description below for Ram trucks 
but I suspect that similar information is available from other manufacturers or one can simply make a few measurements to get close enough. For my truck, the dimensions of interest are L101 and L105. In a table provided, L101 is the wheelbase of 169.3 inches and L105 is labeled as the rear overhang and is 50.4 inches. This dimension is actually to the rear of the truck, which is also the rear of the hitch receiver. The hitch pin hole is recessed approximately 2.5 inches inward, so I'll subtract this 2.5 inches from the 50.4 inches provided for a final dimension of 47.9 inches. I'm using a 28 inch super truss hitch extension from Torque Lift International. The 28 inches is meant to be the dimension between the front and rear hitch pin holes, but is actually 29 inches on my copy, so that is what I will use. Hitch extensions are available from Torque Lift in lengths ranging from 21 inches all the way up to 60 inches. The final piece of what I'm calling tongue length is the length of the ball mount. The dimension of interest is from the hitch pin hole to the center of the ball. This dimension will vary between ball mounts. I plan on using my 6 inch drop ball mount which is pictured on the left which has a pin to ball spacing of 10 inches. Here I've assembled a table with and without my hitch extension. I've also included 48 inch and 60 inch hitch extensions just to show how the forces on the axles would change with longer extensions. I include the previous equations for reference and set the tongue weight for my example to 600 pounds, which is a reasonable tongue weight for my trailer and tractor. The rule of thumb for tongue weight is between 10 and 15 percent of trailer weight. But just as a disclaimer, I am not an expert on trailers and towing. I just know what has worked well for me with my trailer and loads. Recall, for my truck and 6 inch drop ball mount, my tongue length, TL, which I've defined as a distance from the rear axle to the ball, is 57.9 inches. Adding my 28 inch hitch extension, which is actually 29 inches long, gets me to 86.9 inches. I included wheelbase plus tongue length as WB plus TL for completeness. As an aside, for my truck, the reduction of force on the front axle is very close to one third of the tongue weight without a hitch extension. Conversely, the force down on the rear axle is approximately the tongue weight plus an additional one third of the tongue weight. With my 29 inch hitch extension, the reduction of force on the front axle increases to approximately one half of the tongue weight and the additional force down on the rear axle is very close to one and a half times the tongue weight. Of course, the tongue weight has to be balanced out over the two axles, so R minus F is always equal to the tongue weight. Also notice the effect of wheelbase WB. A longer wheelbase will transfer a smaller force to each axle than a shorter wheelbase. Now that I have my calculations, it's time to hitch up my trailer to my truck, load up my tractor, and get it all weighed. I first had to unload my camper because I also want to weigh my trailer and tractor without my hitch extension, and my trailer will not clear the overhang of my camper without it. Hence, the need for an extension. Now that my trailer is connected to my truck, it's time to load my tractor. For what it's worth, I have a 1953 Ford NAA, also known as a Golden Jubilee. I completed a full restoration of this tractor in 1998, but it could use a fresh coat of paint. Now that I have my tractor up on the trailer, it's time to measure the tongue weight. So I'll be using my, my tongue weight scale, which you can see on the gauge there and on a label on front. It's actually made by Sureline Products. This particular tongue weight scale goes all the way up to 2,000 pounds, as you can see on the outer ring, and they also give you, you know, kilograms on the, on the inner scale. Generally, I place my tongue weight scale directly underneath my jack, because my jack is really, in the, really close to the coupling, as you can see here, it's probably less than a foot. 
and that gets me close enough. But I want to be a little bit more accurate here today. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use and place the, uh, my scale directly underneath the coupling. So first I have to, have to jack up the, uh, the tongue. So I'll need to, I'll need to remove my, my ball mount. So first I'll, I'll release the coupling. But I can leave the, I can leave the electrical hooked up and the breakaway cable and the safety chains. I have to crank the coupling up high enough to clear the ball mount. That looks like it ought to do it. And I should be able to then pull out my, my ball mount. So I'm going to install a couple of blocks to support the tongue weight scale. And then I'll install this, this little pin that's also included with the tongue weight scale for use with the coupling. And then just to make it clean, I'll close the I'll go ahead and just close it. And I'm at 600 pounds, just about right on the nose. Time to secure my tractor on my trailer. Now that I'm all loaded up, it's time to drive to my local scales. CAT scales, or Certified Automated Truck Scales, are available mainly for professional truck drivers, but anyone can weigh their personal vehicles as well. All the ones I've used to date are provided by gas stations. I generally go inside first to let the operator know I'm there as I sometimes have trouble communicating with them over the intercom provided. There are separate scales for each axle, or pair of axles, so you need to make sure your front, rear, and trailer axles are on their own scales prior to calling the operator. Once on the scale, you simply press the call button and wait for the operator to tell you to pull forward. Yes sir, first way. After exiting the scales, you pay your fee, which was $13 this time, and provide the operator with any information that you would like to include on your certificate. Here's my results from my truck, trailer, and tractor without my hitch extension installed. Next, I'll install my hitch extension and reweigh. First, I need to remove my ball mount. I insert one of my pins to keep the two and a half inch to two inch sleeve from getting pushed into the receiver. Once I get the extension started into the receiver, I remove the pin and use the non-tapered end to hold the sleeve in place while I slide the receiver home. Then I insert both pins and clevises. The extension includes anti-sway chains, which I install and tighten with the supplied turnbuckles. Typically, I'll re-tighten these once I attach a loaded trailer. I plug in the wiring extension and insert the ball mount. I back up my truck, but since I did not install my tailgate, I don't have the aid of a backup camera, and I'm working alone, so it takes me a few steps. All hitched up and ready to go. My setup looks pretty funny without the camper. 
Time to reweigh. I learned that I could reweigh for much less cost, $3.50 in this case, as long as I did so within 24 hours. Here's the results with my hitch extension installed. Finally, I reweigh again, but this time with only my truck. Here's the results. I've tabulated my final results. I've listed the weight of the individual axles along with the gross weight on the left side. I listed each of the three weights with my truck by itself and then with my trailer and tractor, first without my hitch extension and then with my extension. I calculate and include the net weights when weighing the trailer by subtracting the weight of the truck. Finally, I calculate the change that results from adding my hitch extension. The net decrease on the front axle without the hitch extension is just what I had predicted, but the increase on the rear axle is higher than I expected. That said, the resolution of the scale seems to be 20 pounds based on my experiences with using various scales. So a 20 or 40 pound discrepancy could be a result of this rounding. Note also, the gross weights are the same with and without my extension installed. Overall, I believe the results match fairly closely to my expectations. If you find this video useful at all, please give me a like below and comment either the way. Consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. And if you do, you'll get to see me in the next video.